week, we've been following the efforts of the Teesside-based football charity Lions Raw in South Africa. They've been working with some of the country's most deprived youngsters, all brought together by their mutual love of football. Tonight, in his final report, Andrew Hartley joins them far away from the TV glamour of the World Cup. Holland! It's cost more than three billion pounds to stage and created memories for these lucky fans that will last a lifetime. Welcome to the biggest sporting event on the planet. We love Holland! So here we are in Durban, it's the World Cup. We're about 6,000 miles away from the northeast, but a million miles away from the lives of many ordinary South Africans. The valley of a thousand hills, the land the World Cup forgot. But the passion for football here is every bit as intense as it is in the big city. They love the game here and they know all about the Northeast big teams. Yeah, I play every day. Yeah? I play every day. Why do so many of your friends like football? What's so important about it? For your skill, yeah? for, your, for your experience. Oh, there's 100, 150 people on this pitch. With the younger kids, we've had five or six mini schools going. We've been playing football over here with the older guys. And then suddenly there's two teams turned up that want to play. So we've lent them a strip, lent them goalie gloves, and Morris is going to referee for us. No fighting, no swearing. Everybody works, and we all play together. That man in the middle is the former Sunderland defender, Morris Hepworth. He's one of 50 coaches in South Africa with the Teesside-based charity Lions Roar, a movement of football fans fighting poverty. These guys have got absolutely nothing. I've been invited into the houses. The humility that these people have, it's got to be seen to be believed. So when we come out of the bus and we give a prize away, whether it's a frisbee or a hat or goalkeeper's gloves, you've, you've got to see the kids' eyes. Football is the passion of South Africa. Football is the way to transform South African culture. Here in South Africa, football is changing lives, and not just for these children. South Africa. It will totally change my life forever in terms of the perspective and what we've got, what my children and what my family have got in Penshaw compared to what these children have got here. It's match day back in Durban, a chance for Morris to sample some World Cup atmosphere. It's a fantastic experience, but the contrast with the place he's just left behind could not be more glaring. This represents the Western culture, it represents money, it represents um, armchair fans, if you can put it like that. And then we go to Inchanga and you see the looks on the children's faces <clears throat> when we distribute a pair of football boots. Who actually benefits from all the money that FIFA have made from this World Cup? Certainly not the, not the general people of South Africa. Andrew Hartley, BBC Look North, South Africa. Hi. My name is Morris Epworth and I'm a great friend of Dave. We were in South Africa together in 2010 with Lions Raw and we had an amazing time together and that's where I got to know him really well. Absolute quality guy um, with a strong and loving faith of Jesus Christ. So we've remained friends ever since and um, he asked me a couple of weeks ago to do a testimony for you. And it was a real out-of-the-blue telephone call. Great to hear from him. And it's my privilege to share 15, 20 minutes with you um, to just give you a little bit of background who I am, where I'm from, and how I found Jesus and what a part of my life Jesus really is. So I'm an ex-professional footballer. I played for Sunderland. And I played for a team in South Africa called Arcadia Shepherds. Now, at Sunderland, I made my debut at 17, and I was in the cup final squad in 73. Unfortunately, I got a serious injury the week before, uh, on the Wednesday before the cup final on the Saturday, which was a ruptured spleen, burst duodenum, ruptured bowel, 
and I nearly died on the pitch. So that that is a story in itself, so I won't go too much into that, but if, needless to say, it finished my career at Sunderland. But then that allowed me to open another door, which was to go and play in South Africa, where I was for five years. Had an amazing time there. Uh, we were the first white team to play a black player. We were the first white side to play in Soweto in front of 50,000 people. So it was really groundbreaking times in South Africa. And it was in South Africa that I actually met Jesus because, and I'll, I'll rephrase that sometimes, saying I met Jesus. It was in South Africa where I found faith. And it was in front of 23,000 people at the Caledonian Stadium in Pretoria when we were playing a local derby. And my right leg was broken in two places, compound fracture. And I don't know whether you've all heard this little voice that sometimes speaks through your heart. Well, for the first time, I heard that little voice when I hit the ground in absolute agony, realising that my career was absolutely well and truly over. And that little voice said to me, I'll take care of you now. And that was really the start of a 40-year journey. And it has been an incredible time. Uh, what God has done, where he's taken me in my faith. And you realize that there are times when Jesus is always with you, but he, te he will test you, that's for sure. And he will challenge you. And that's what he's done in my life. He challenged me, he's tested me. And I had what I call my real foot of the cross moment actually about three months when I came back from South Africa for that trip uh, during the World Cup. And during that time in South Africa, it was a very, very special. And I realized that something was working in my heart and there was some real direction coming from where I felt God wanted me to be and what he wanted me to do. So I remember it was one morning Saturday morning um, and I just felt the Lord take me to the bottom to the foot of the cross totally and I just gave everything you know because sometimes we think yeah okay I, I've given everything to Jesus so that's it so I'm a Christian now well that's that's not what it is like I said it's a journey and it's a journey of faith and that morning my faith became absolutely everything in my life, totally unconditionally. My love for Jesus is unconditional. My love for my wife, my love for my job, everything I do is unconditional now. It's not, a, no, it was no longer about me. It was about what I could do for other people. And during that moment, I felt that little voice again say to me, okay, I want you to give up your job. And I want you to go and be my disciple because I trust you now with my name. And that's what I did. I gave up a 75, 80,000 pound a year job. I set up my own business, my MH coaching and leadership. And off I went in pure faith. And God has taken me to so many places, opened so many doors that I would not have been able to do or get anywhere near, such as Premier League and working in football clubs, working with head teachers, um, sharing people's lives, going on, on trips to you know, Romania, looking after children. And it's just blessed me, it just continues to bless me. And it's just a privilege to love Jesus. But I think one of the biggest things that taught, that really kind of come really kind of cemented my faith for Jesus was a couple of weeks after I'd had my foot at the cross moment, um, I'd been reading a book called um, Success of Significance, and it was written by a guy called Bob Buffett. And I was reading this book one morning in the garden, the sun was shining, and it was about a couple of weeks after I'd had my foot at the cross moment. 
and I was getting into this book and it was super, super stuff. And then I got to chapter five and chapter five was Adios Ross. And I knew straight away in my heart what God was going to tell me or what was going to, what I was going to be challenged to do. So I read this paragraph, I read this chapter and in this chapter, Bob Buffett's son, Ross, um, goes to Mexico with three of his friends before he, before he starts working for his dad as MD of a electrical company in Dallas. And on the last day, him and his mates have a few tequilas and the jump, the jump from Mexico into the Rio Grande and they swim across to try and see what an illegal alien is. Uh, what it feels like and obviously Bob Buffett's son didn't come out and Bob Buffett described vividly in that book in that chapter how it felt to lose his son and how Jesus got him through it without him he would not have been able to cope and I realised at that moment I had the only thing at the foot of the cross I hadn't given Jesus was my children so that's what I did and I gave my, all of my children individually to Jesus and said, they're yours, they're on loan to you. And therefore, I pray that you don't take any of them away, Lord. But if you do, then that, that be your will. And thank you for them, because they are gifts on loan to me. And that was it, really. Um, over the last 10 years, God has blessed me in so many ways. My wife, my children, my business, and unconditionally teaching me what it is to just be yourself. Don't wear masks. Don't be someone you're not. And my words I say every morning is I kiss my wife, I tell her I love her, and I go and spend at least an hour, maybe two hours, in quiet time with Jesus because to do what as disciples of Jesus, we need that prayer time because when we cross our front doors and we go into the world it is a really tough place and as a disciple of Jesus I need that protection of, of his his love and his faith and he wraps me around in, in his arms every time I go out of the house so I hope that this has kind of um, given you a little bit of an insight as to who I am I'm married to Megan. I've got six children, nine grandchildren. I'm extremely blessed. And God has taught me how to listen, how to story tell, how to definitely be transparent and how to be authentic. And that's the only way you can live your life. And number one in my life is Jesus. Number two in my life is my wife. Number three in my wife, number, sorry, number three in my life is my children. And number four is my business, because if you get the first one right, all the rest fall, rest fall into place. So, Dave, I love you, mate. Thank you so much for inviting me to give this short testimony. And it's been an absolute privilege, and I hope that someone somewhere listening to this will hear that little voice saying to them, hey, come on, let's do this properly. Let's not be a Sunday Christian. Let's be someone who really goes out there and really lives like Jesus and role models as a disciple of Jesus. So God bless and thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.